Hello, this is SEO Hangouts with Josh Bashinsky, and I'm not Josh, I'm Melissa of So Me Girl, and I'm taking over the video today. I'm going to give you a bit of a roundup from Social Media Marketing World, the conference uh, I attended in San Diego on our California trip. Those of you who watch Josh regularly know we were away for a month, and it was fabulous being in California. Uh, so in no particular order, just random tips and information from the sessions I attended and from some of the conversations I had outside the conference, which are always interesting. A couple words quickly about the conference. It's a great conference put on by Social Media Examiner. They have a podcast and a blog and a bunch of great people. This is the second year they ran the conference and I have to say it was one of the better conferences. I've attended. It was super well organized. You just had to look remotely lost and there were people there to help you. Uh, there was actually food I could eat, which was great. And there were tons of fun networking events. There was a night on the USS Midway, which is an aircraft carrier where we got to play in fight, flight simulators. No fighting, just flights. Flight simulators. And there was food and music. That was great. And then the second night there was a uh, trip around the bay on a boat with karaoke. I am not a karaoke enthusiast, however Josh is. Maybe someday you guys can get him to sing for you. So tips, information, that kind of stuff in no particular order. So one thing that's always talked about in social media is that helpful is the new viral. Welcome to forums 1998. Uh, of course, I suppose it's repeated because people aren't doing it. Not new advice, but good advice. So that relates to a study that was uh, presented there, done by the social baker. And in it, they found the industry standard for replying to customers is 19.2 hours, whereas customers expect to be replied to in 30 minutes. So that's a big discrepancy. The good news is that most likely your competitors taking that long to answer too. So you can step in. One, by doing, uh, making sure you're answering people who actually talk to you. Sometimes it's uh, a bit much to be on social all the time, and I'm going to talk about that a little bit later, but make sure you always, always answer customers that directly talk to you or mention you in, on Twitter. And two, you can watch for mentions of your business, of um, the your business area that might be directed towards other businesses, your competitors, it chances are they're taking time to respond. So just respond to those questions in a general way and you might steal that customer. There's a lot of social managing tools like Hootsuite that can do these searches for you and make it a bit easier. Another thing we hear a lot about is when should I post on social media? I'm sure you've seen infographics that tell you to post on Facebook on Tuesday between one and two and on Twitter between blah, blah, blah. Those are all great places to start and, uh, you know, statistics are great. However, your audience may actually lie outside the statistical audience and um, you may be posting at a time that's not great. So one thing that I thought a great tip that came out of the conference is to post your next post an hour or two after the last engagement on the post you just made. There is no point in doubling down if a post you made earlier is still doing well and being talked about. And by doing well, I mean engagement. And engagement was the other big buzzword at the conference. So for instance, on Facebook, this means you want your PTAT increased. PTAT is P-T-A-T. -T. It's a Facebook algorithm that just means people talking about this. And it means people are talking about your page or directly engaging in your page. This is particularly important with Facebook because they aren't showing content that isn't getting engagement. So that engagement is what you definitely want to work on increasing, not necessarily just followers or page likes. So in order to increase your engagement on Facebook, here are some tactics. Do a promoted post and then engage with the people that respond to your post. Um, by engage, I mean respond to them. A lot of people don't respond to them, but respond preferably with something that keeps the conversation going, keeps them talking and like their comment. So when they post on you, you can, there's a little like, make sure you like their comment as well because people like to be liked. 
Now, on your Facebook post, there's this little boost button under each of your posts. What I'm saying, when I'm saying promoted post, I don't mean press the boost button. The boost button is crack. It's addictive, it's risky, and um, it's not. It's something that I would say stay away from because you can do a promoted post, which is different than boosting your post. Uh, when you boost your post, you have absolutely no control. Instead, with using a promoted post, you have way more control over the ad. Your post becomes an ad at this point. You get to choose placement, um, and you can choose, for instance, who you're going to reach. You can suppress people that have already you've already reached, and just focus on the ones you haven't. So definitely promoted over over boost. Uh, so on Twitter, there was a great app brought up called Twiriad. So Twitter added to period Twiriad. <laughs> Um, it's an app that tells you what time your last thousand followers, so uh, if you pay, I think it's free up to a thousand and then after that you pay more, you'd have to check for sure. But the last thousand followers uh, were on Twitter, what time they were on Twitter. So this can help you to reach out to people and engage with them. Because Twitter is often difficult to nurse and if you've know, spoken with me before I say that, because you have to know when people are on so you can actually talk to them. Uh, remember that people don't dig very far on the Twitter feed. In fact, they don't generally go below the fold. So knowing when people are on is great. So that's a great app that uh, that came up. Also, there was a good idea that came out with Twitter lists. Twitter lists are literally lists you make on Twitter. <laughs> on your profile page, you can go on and there's a little um, drop down. You can go in there and create a list and name it and then add people to the list. So you can easily monitor certain groups of people instead of going through all their followers. And you can make multiple lists. Um, you can make them based on conferences or interests or customers, potential customers. So a cool thing you can do though, with a Twitter list is make it private. So for instance, you could follow your competitors and keep an eye on what they're doing without necessarily following them outright. So you would make a list, add the follow, um, add your competitors, sorry, and not follow them, and just see what they're doing, see what kind of ads are running, see what's working for them. Um, another good thing about Twitter lists in relation to the question I always get asked, and that question is, where do I find a culture to engage with? <laughs> um, so using a Twitter list, you can scroll through other people's Twitter lists and find more people to engage with. So the idea here is that you are following someone and you already are engaging in their posts or it's in the culture that you're interested in. If they have lists and you can look through their lists, you can follow the people that are on those lists and grow that way. And the, again, you would think that they are going to be talking about the same issues and engage in the same culture you're looking for. And then one last thing for Twitter is to remind you, you don't need to be constantly producing original content on Twitter, specifically. On Twitter, you can and should be retweeting other people's tweets. That's one of the ways you engage in a culture. Um, retweeting something shows you like someone's content and helps promote them and, and builds relations that way. So just don't retweet and post too much as people will unfollow you if you clog up their feed. I have a few people who have some great information, but I'll go on and there'll be a hundred tweets from them and, and then they go, they go bye-bye. So one Twitter posting action every few hours, but not more than, I don't know, let's say one an hour, it's, it's kind of hard. So you could do three or four in a row and then be off Twitter for a couple of hours. So think a few retweets, a few of your own personal tweets per day for maximal growth and engagement. Um, Doing this is how I build up uh, well over a thousand followers in three months for clients, all organic, none bought, all engaged. And that's really the kind of followers you want. And engagement, uh, another really great twi <laughs> twip, <laughs> tip um, for your own social page is once you've picked a culture or issue you're engaging with, write something, it doesn't have to be big or spectacular, and then search that topic or issue and note journalists who um, come up in the first few searches. So search on Google, find the journalists that are talking about this, and then make a list of them so you can easily find them later and tag or mention them when you post this piece. This was something that came out that a lot of people were doing from big firms to little groups and getting tons and tons of success with because 
journalists have to produce so much content right now, they're, they're usually content starved. So, for instance, let's say one of the cultures you've decided to engage with is um, vegetarianism. So write a piece on local farms, uh, local farmers markets, let's say, and then tag the journalists in the piece, or not in the piece, but when you post the piece, tag them. Um, and you can do this both on Twitter and Google+. Plus. In Google+, Plus, you can actually tag a lot more people because you have more characters there and, um, and can get a really good um, distribution for what you're doing. So, on to Pinterest. Um, on Pinterest, you want to remember to use large custom images. Tons of people, and I see this with clients all the time, are using tiny, tiny little images. And Pinterest is a visual social media platform, so you want to use big pictures. The larger, so use large images with proper titles. Doing so is reported to increase traffic by 15%. So that's a decent um, percentage. So it means you want to use the full 735 um, pixels or thereabouts that Pinterest uh, maxes out at. They'll use, Pinterest allows any image um, 80 pixels or up, but then you get this little tiny picture and um, it's really too small to have any kind of effect. Another good Pinterest tip involves a tool, the Pinit Chrome extension. So you want to make sure your images are also created with the Pinit, <clears throat> with Pinit Chrome extension in mind. So in case you're not familiar with the Pinit um, extension, it's uh, something you add to Chrome. Um, you go into the store, add it to Chrome free, and it allows, it gives you a little Pinterest button whenever you hover over any uh, image on a website. So it's really great for people who are addicted to Pinterest, like some of us. Um, you can just go and quickly just, it's, it's like the boost button on Facebook, it's very addictive and you can easily pin things, which gets, again, um, uh, engagement for your site. So you want to add a good description to your image so people can repin it with one click. And the other thing is if it has a good description, people are less likely to change your words that you, in your description that you worked really hard to craft for optimal search results. Okay, now on to Google+. This is so funny. Google+, Plus was the big excitement at the conference a year ago. If you were in a session on Google+, Plus, like some of us geeks were, there'd be five people, and you know those five people because you see them all the time. And it's been a year, and the Google+, Plus sessions were packed. People were sitting on the floor, and no one knows what's going on with Google+. Plus. That's mostly what the attendees felt like. Why are they packed? I think you probably know, but I'll quote Jesse Stay, who did a great Google Plus um, uh, presentation, and and he said, "Social is the new SEO, and Google Plus is pushing us there." That's his quote. So realize that Google Plus isn't a social uh, network or platform like other social. Um, like Facebook or Twitter, it's the social layer of our Googleopolis that we all live in. Which, um, and I mostly agree with Jesse, but we have to remember that uh, while Google Plus is definitely Google's social network, which by default means you have to play because we're all Google users, it's not entirely clear how the relation between social and Google rankings work. So what we do know, though, is that engagement and authorship are big factors over, say, followers. But engagement does include plus ones, comments, and shares. So you want to nurse those over getting a bunch of followers on Google+. So things you can do on Google+, to help you engage. One, go to a community, and I'm using the technical Google+, term here. They have communities that you can join. And um, go through the followers of a community and follow that are any that are engaged. So not just members, because there are lots of abandoned profiles on Google Plus, but people that are actually posting, because the idea is these people are engaged in Google Plus. Google Plus is very community-based, and they're gonna follow you back and be interested in, in what you have to say because you've gone to a specific community you were interested in. You can also use circlecount.com. It's a great site to find relevant audiences on Google+, because it gives you people, pages, and communities. 
Um, it's a good little spot to check out as it ranks engagement. So for instance, I checked out Firefly the other day and it was one of um, the top engaged communities. So brown coats unite, yay geeks. Um, and so you can check, you can check what's what's popular. It might give you a way to find a, a community to engage with for, for your business. And so the biggest thing at the Google Plus sessions Arguably one of, if not the most, debated thing at the conference, the thing that sent the white hats into a tizzy, is the email and phone number need to opt out portion of Google+. Plus. That's right. You technically can harvest emails and phone numbers off Google+. Plus. Now, it would be wrong to say hire a programmer to write a program to collect all that info and generate a marketing list. Hello, cold calls. Not only is it wrong, it is against Google Plus's policies to do this. But I can say that uh, a, that's a big loophole in Google Plus and some big firms that I saw there, and we're talking some with big clients, were um, very happy about that loophole. So if you want to check out what I'm talking about, you can just go on to Google Plus and check out any profile. And if the person hasn't opted out, you'll see their email address and, and for a lot of people, their phone number as well. And, and that's literally how easy it is to do it. So again, this is very much against Google Plus policies. But a black hat would say, theoretically speaking only, if you sell, let's say, yellow bananas, you could search a community for profiles that are interested in yellow bananas, search all the profiles within that community and collect that information for marketing purposes. Because the, of course, emails are still, they still convert the best. Some studies even say uh, better than websites, but currently still better than social. Um, in fact, that was one of the main things too at the conference was get those email addresses. Um, platforms can change, right? Facebook changed earlier this year and everyone, we a bunch of us build up such huge communities and they're getting very little engagement because Facebook changed their algorithm. Whereas the email list is yours. You got it in your, your, your hands and you can do something with it. So if you're running, let's say, a Facebook contest or a Twitter contest, get an email as part of the person's entry for them to win whatever you're giving away because you can use that email later. So... A few more things for Google+. Plus. Memes on Google+, Plus still get attention. They don't necessarily on all the other platforms, but they do on Google+, Plus, and this is something I know for a fact, and it was confirmed multiple times at the conference. And the other cool thing is hashtags on Google+, Plus trend with just 50 people using it, which is really, really small for a network. So use those hashtags, people. Hashtag everything. Um, check what hashtags are trending, you know, if you can use that, but also use your own and use simple hashtags in many ways. And that'll help get your you noticed on Google+. So to finish off some overall trends from the conference, don't worry so much about likes and followers. I mean, you still, you still want them, obviously, but a good portion of your attention should be focused on nursing the engagements. And, and this is particularly true, as I was saying, for Google+. There was more than one study presented at the conference um, showing that thousands of followers didn't get the traffic and conversions that small engaged groups produced. One study was 400 followers versus I think it was close to 2K and, and the 400 was getting way better sales. Um, if, and we know why. We all know why that is. It's because the thousands of followers are often bought. <laughs> um, and social platforms in an effort to fight those following purchasing, um, they're focusing on engagement. And that means for you, for all of us, you need to be on nearly all the time. Of course, there are some tools. You can use Hootsuite, Buffer, Sprout. Those are all social managing uh, management tools, but social still requires a lot of attention to keep engagement going. And this is why so many companies are hiring fabulous social media consultants. So, um, if you're having trouble with social um, or having trouble getting traffic and clearly identifying signals, you're absolutely not alone. 
The other big thing I really want to share is that a lot of companies aren't able to easily quantify ROI, return on investment, of social. And the one thing I noticed at the conference that I thought was interesting was how some big social companies, and I'm not going to mention anyone here because I have some friends, but even the 5k per month, people are having the same problem wondering what to do. And there's a lot of talk about how to get engagement and traffic up. And what, what basically a lot of them are doing is producing articles and or content for that budget, for that 5k per month. And for those of you who listen to Josh um, regularly or know anything about SEO, know that content has to be great quality or Pan is going to bite you, right? So all that content that these companies are producing is not necessarily helping. It, it might be, and in, in many ways it, it is, but not always. In fact, there were a few people that I encountered that it, it, it had not helped. It had actually hindered clients. So this goes to show you, you don't need that 5k budget and all that content marketing. What you do need is someone who really knows how to find cultures, engage with cultures, tailor custom messages for them, stimulate and maintain conversations with them. Uh, for instance, the client I referenced in my last video, the one with the graph I, I talked about, we've tripled their monthly revenue for just doing social. Uh, that's what it means when you find and make friends in a community, right? They, they buy from you, they trust you. So the big key is to make friends. Join a culture, and then eventually, once you've done a lot, you could even build your own. And for goodness sakes, be friendly on social media. I, I don't know what's going on there, but be friendly, be nice. Say the right thing at the right time with the right frequency. And this doesn't happen, I'm not saying it's going to be quick. It doesn't happen overnight and it needs attention. You're going to misfire on some cultures, you're going to try to join them, and it's just big wah wah, nothing happens. And then keep trying, try because eventually you'll hit one or two that really works. I know this is a lot of work, so you can hire someone to do it. My email is melissapashinsky at gmail.com, at two, number two, some girl on Twitter, just saying. Um, and if you don't want to hire me, which is fine, you could always hire an intern, let's say, hire someone who's a real social, chatty Cathy kind of person, and their whole job is to get them to be on social media and be your social ambassador. They do nothing else. They don't get coffee, they don't do photocopying, they don't do whatever else. Their whole job is just to be on social media and make friends out there. And if that doesn't work, um, that doesn't work for you, and you're gonna do it yourself, Remember your cocktail party experience, right? Don't shout about yourself. Don't go to the party with your bag full of stuff and try to sell things to people. You don't make friends, you end up not getting invited to the party again. You're gonna to talk to someone, see how things go with them, make connections. Make your social profiles um, personable and personal in some way. So occasionally put up pictures of the office cat if you have one. Um, if, if you like Firefly, you know, put a little thing up here there. Just make, don't, don't get personal necessarily, but put something out there that makes you a person and people are more likely to talk, talk to you. And the other thing to do on social media is answer questions. In his keynote, Marcus Sheridan, if you ever get a chance to see that guy speak, he's great. Um, he said, become the Wikipedia for your industry, which is great advice. Just answer those questions because they're out there. And someone wants their question asked if you or answered, sorry, and if, if you answer it, they'll more than likely come to you. But whatever option you choose, hire me, um, get an intern, do it yourself, whatever you do, just get out there and get on social, get talking, because Josh and I are seeing some really, really cool traffic results from social. Um, I'll be doing a video soon with a cool new graph. It's pretty exciting. So you want to get out there and build your friendships and build your reputation up. So um, with that, I'm going to wish you a good week. If you have any social program questions, if there's any way I can help with your social program or you just want to talk a little bit more about social media or clarification on something I've said, please email me. My email address again is melissabyshinsky at gmail.com or reach out on Twitter. I'm often on there. And my Twitter handle is at two, the number two, some girl. So have a great week and here's to good engagement.